Hello everyone, welcome to Storytime with Mrs Stokes. Today we're going to be reading Chapter 2 of A Viking at Our School, written by Jeremy Strong. A severe case of Vikingitis. Zoe and Tim were delighted. They could not think of anything better than having Sigurd back at the Viking Hotel. They hurtled down the front steps of the hotel and launched themselves at the new guests. Tibby! cried Zoe. Siggy! yelled Tim. May the good Lord save us, murmured Mr Ellis to his pale wife. He put on a brave smile and marched down the steps towards his uninvited guests. Sigurd, how nice to see you again after all this time. How are you? How are you? To you too, beamed Sigurd. Tim burst out laughing. He sounds like an owl, doesn't he, Zoe? Doesn't he sound like an owl? Too wit, too who, wooty too, tooty wooty hooty. All right, Tim, said Mr Ellis. I think we get the picture. She turned to Mrs Tibblethwaite, took her suitcase from her and immediately ground to a halt because she couldn't manage the weight. Mrs Tibblethwaite picked it up with one hand. What's all this about? asked Penny Ellis. This is a surprise. Mrs T gave her a sharp look and nodded. I thought you might not be too pleased, she sighed. Oh, it's not that, Penny trailed off in confusion as her cheeks turned a delicate and embarrassed red. Mrs Tibblethwaite patted Penny's arm. It's quite all right. I thought you might be, uh, just a touch apprehensive about Siggy coming back here. But I'm afraid, my dear, that we had little choice. We thought you were on another wrestling tour, said Mrs Ellis. We were on a wrestling tour. Unfortunately, things got a little out of hand at our last match. How surprising, murmured Penny with a knowing glance at her friend. I don't suppose it had anything to do with Sigurd? Of course it did, but it wasn't really his fault. It hardly ever is, Mrs Ellis pointed out. It's just that he's always there when things go wrong. Quite sighed Mrs Tibblethwaite. Anyway, to cut a long story short, we have been banned from wrestling in public ever again. We are both out of a job. We didn't know what to do. So you came here, finished Penny. Mrs Tibblethwaite nodded glumly. Don't worry, Penny went on brightly. You're very welcome, although I'm not so sure about Siggy. Just look at him out in the garden with Tim and Keith. The two women peered out through the window. Sigurd seemed to be giving Tim a lesson. A lesson in swordsmanship. Tim was staggering round, trying to lift Nosepicker above his head and going cross-eyed with the effort. You have to be like wild animal, shouted Sigurd. You roar and stamp and scare your enemies. You rush at them and go, rah! Sigurd, interrupted Mr Ellis. Do you think you could look where you're going? You're treading on our new flowers. I only planted them last week. But Sigurd was far too busy showing Tim how fierce a real Viking warrior could be. I show you. You watch me. I scare panties on all enemies. Siggy, you have to scare the pants off your enemies, not on them. Tim giggled. Sigurd seized Nosepicker from him. Rah! he yelled, whirling the fierce blade round his head like a helicopter about to take off. Rah! Mind out, cried Mr Ellis. You've just chopped my new Forsyth bush in half. Dare to the Forsyth, yelled Sigurd, taking another great swipe. It's only a bush, Siggy. It's not your deadly Ah, oh, Help! Mr Ellis suddenly set off round the garden as Sigurd leapt after him, growling and scowling and waving those picker like a giant carving knife. Round the garden they went five times until at last Sigurd stopped, put his hands on his hips and burst out laughing. You see me, Tim? I scare the panties all over the place. 
Mr. Ellis collapsed exhausted on the garden bench. His wife came out with a tray of tea and biscuits. Are you having fun, dear? She asked gently. Playing Vikings with Siggy and Tim? She winked at Mr. Tibblethwaite and Zoe. Poor Mr. Ellis couldn't answer at first. He was too busy panting. <gasps> that man's a <sighs> maniac. He could have killed me. Will he be <sighs> staying long? Oh, I do hope not. I don't think I could cope. We've had enough problems with the hotel as it is. Oh, please, Dad, pleaded Zoe. Let him stay a bit. It's fun when Siggy's around. Fun? Look at this place. That Viking has only been here ten minutes and already the garden looks like the surface of the moon. I'm afraid Siggy might be here for some time, said Mrs Ellis. She handed him a cup of tea and explained about the wrestling ban. Her husband's face crumpled at the news. Mrs Tibblethwaite hastily reached inside her bag, pulled out a little silver flask and unscrewed the cap before offering it to Mr Ellis. Drink this. It's brandy, strictly for medicinal purposes. I usually have a drop or two when I find myself suffering from Vikingitis. Mr Ellis took a few gulps, coughed, spluttered and sat up straight. Colour flooded back into his face. The children watched him carefully. Please, mouthed Zoe. You've got to let Sigurd stay or I shan't speak to you ever again, scowled Tim. Is that a threat or a promise? asked Mr Ellis. OK, Siggy, can stay for a while, but there are certain rules. Number one, no swords, indoors or outdoors. Number two, you both have to help in the hotel. We'll do anything to help, said Mrs Tibblethwaite. I help, beamed Sigurd. You no want sword? Okie dokie, I throw sword away. Sigurd, no! Siggy Viking had a brush, slip slap, slip slap slop, and on the brush he had some paint. Slip slap, slip slap slop. But Sigurd had already hurled Nose Picker over one shoulder and the mighty sword was flying through the air. Five seconds later there was an almighty crash of splintering glass as it smashed through the hotel greenhouse. Mr Ellis seized Mrs Tibblethwaite's silver hip blast, took another deep swig and buried his head in both his hands. After that, things quietened down a little. This was partly because Mr Ellis took to his bed with a headache and various other symptoms of Vikingitis, while Mrs Tibblethwaite and Siggy got settled into one of the hotel bedrooms. The only other guests at the hotel were an elderly couple, the Ramsbottoms, and Mr Travis, who was in Floatby on business. The truth of the matter was that since Sigurd had left, business had gone down. While there had been a real 10th century Viking staying at the hotel, it had attracted customers. But Siggy and Tibby became tag wrestling team and began their countrywide tour. Many of the hotel guests left and had not returned. The Viking Hotel was beginning to look a bit tatty. What it really needed was a good coat of paint. The Ellises had already decided they ought to do the painting while there were so few guests staying, and Mr Ellis reckoned that Sigurd could make himself useful with a paintbrush. Early the next day, he set the Viking to task. Do the front of the house first of all, said Mr Ellis, leaning on a ladder against the front porch. I want all the doors done, and the windows, and the railings. Understand? Okie dokie, boss, nodded Sigurd, levering the lid off the paint tin. There was a loud scrawling, and the lid whizzed across the road like a flying saucer and landed upside down on Mr Crump's front doorstep. Mr Ellis sighed and went back inside. Sigurd quickly warmed up to his task. The paint was a lovely bright green. Up and down the ladder he went, singing away to himself one of the songs Tim had taught him, but with some new words. Sicky Viking had a brush, slip slap, slip slap, slop. And on this brush he had some paint, slip slap, slip slap, slop. With a plip plop here and a plip plop there, here a plip, there a plop, everywhere a plip plop. 
Ziggy by King Hadda. Ziggy, what on earth are you doing? Mrs Ellis stood on the pavement, gazing up at the front of the hotel in disbelief. There was bright green paint everywhere. Sigurd had spilled great green puddles all over the entrance. Then he had walked in the puddles and left bright, bright green boot prints up and down the porch. There were bright green hand prints all over the walls. Most of Sigurd's helmet was bright green and so were his clothes. He grinned down at Mrs Ellis. I go painting, he said proudly, with a flip flop here and a... But you've painted all the windows. Windows, yelled Mrs Ellis, almost beside herself. Mr Ellis said paint the doors and the railings and the windows, nodded Sigurd. But you've painted all the glass, screamed Mrs Ellis. All our windows are bright green. Nobody can see out any more. Mr and Mrs Ramsbottom think it's night time and won't come down for breakfast. On the other side of the road, Mr. Crump opened the front door to see what all the fuss was about and stepped straight in onto the upturned lid of bright green paint. He buckled on the shining green hotel opposite, shook his foot angrily and sent the paint lid skimming back along his hall where it left a nice green skid trail the entire length of the carpet. Mrs Ellis took one look at his angry face, ran inside, bolted the door and rushed upstairs to the bedroom. Another very severe case of viking -itis had just taken hold. And that is the end of chapter two. Until next time, have a lovely week.